in, in section 5.4, we are going to apply uh, the uh, what we've learned about proportions. So it's all about applications and how to apply that to problem solving. And so here's the first problem, uh, burning calories. The readout on Mary's treadmill indicates that she burns 108 calories when she walks for 24 minutes. The question is, how many calories will she burn if she walks at the same rate for 30 minutes? So to familiarize ourselves, uh, let's say, let C be the number of calories So we let C be the number of calories she will burn if she walks at the same rate for 30 minutes. We will translate to a proportion and we make each side the ratio of calories to time in minutes. In other words, calories burned to time and the time is measured in minutes. So in other words, the number of calories burned when she walks for 30 minutes is equal to the number of calories burned, which is 108, when she is walking for 24 minutes. So calories in the numerators and then the time in minutes in the denominators. Now we solve this proportion, because it is a proportion, um, by cross multiplying. C times 24, C times 24 equals 30 times 108. To isolate the variable C, we divide both sides by 24. C times 24 divided by 24 is equal to 30 times 108 divided by 24. This isolates C and 30 times 108 divided by 24 is equal to 135. So C equals 135. and we check by substituting this value for C in the original proportion. So we replace C with 135. So again, here we cross multiplied C times 24 equals 30 times 108. We divide them by, on both sides by 24. So that isolates C, and on the right side we have 30 times 108 divided by 24, and that is equal to 135. So then to check, we replace C with 135 in the original proportion. So we have 135 to 30 is equal to 108 to 24, and when we cross multiply, we have 135 times 24 equals to 30 times 108. So 135 times 24 is 3,240, and 30 times 108 equals 3,240. So the cross products are the same. So now we state our answer, and that is uh, Mary will burn 135 calories if she walks 30 minutes at the same rate. Here you have the complete answer, Mary will burn 135 cal calories if she walks at the same rate for 30 minutes.
The next exercise is a guided solution. Here we are determining paint needs. Lowell and Chris run a painting company during the summer to pay for the college expenses. They can paint 1,600 square feet of clapboard with four gallons of paint. How much paint would be needed for building the 6,000 square feet of clapboard? To familiarize ourselves, let P equals the amount of paint needed in gallons for 6,000 square feet. Then we translate this into a proportion. So 4 gallons to 1,600 square feet would be equal to P number of gallons to 6,000 square feet. We solve by cross-multiplying. 4 times 6,000 equals 1,600 times P. When we divide both sides by 1,600, then P equals 15. And we can cross check the cross product, and they are the same. And now we state the answer for 6,000 square feet. They would need 15 gallons of paint. So you can see that proportions make it very easy to solve these types of problems. And, um, you know, that's not the only way we, the only reason we use proportions, but uh, it's a good way to solve this sort of crap, those kind of problems. The next exercise is about purchasing shirts. If two shirts can be bought for $47, how many shirts can be bought with $200? To familiarize ourselves with the situation, let's say that S is the number of shirts that can be bought with $200. We translate this into a proportion where we have the uh, number of shirts in the numerator and the cost in the denominator. This gives us the following proportion, S to 200, the number of shirts that can be bought for, for this $200, equals two, two shirts for $47. We solve this proportion by cross-multiplying. We get S times 47 equals two times 200. Now divide, we divide by, on both sides by 47. So then S is equal to 2 times 200 divided by 47. And that is equal to 8. It's approximately equal to 8.51. Obviously, we cannot buy partial shirts, so we need to round this down to S to equal about 8 shirts. So we check our proportions. So it's important to note that even though numerically we would typically round up because 8.51 is closer to 9, we, don't, we cannot buy 9 shirts for $200. So we have to round down. That's an observation here. So we check the, um, the cross product uh, using 8.51 for S in the original uh, uh, proportion. So 8.51 to 200 equals 2 to 47. Let's check that out. So the one cost product is 8.51 times 47, and that is equal to 399.97. And the other one, 2 times or 200 times 2 is equal to 400. So obviously that's close enough to say, okay, that's approximately equal. So we state our answer. Eight shirts can be bought with $200. So eight shirts can be bought with $200.
In the next exercise, we're looking at waist to hip ratio. It is recommended that a woman's waist to hip ratio be 0 0.85 or lower. Remember this part also, or lower. Martina's hip measurement is 40 inches. To meet the recommendation, what should her waist measurement be? So first of all, note that 0.85 is equal to 85 divided by 100, and that is the waist to hip ratio. Waist to hip. So let W be Martina's hip measurement. W is Martina's waist, I mean waist measurement. We're going to translate this into a proportion. So we have uh, W, a waist, waist measurement, to a 40-inch hip measurement equals 85 to 100. So again, this is the recommended Recommended waist to hip ratio. And again, on the left side, we have the waist measurement to hip measurement. It's always a good idea right next to it just to make sure that we have all the correct uh, expressions in the numerator, the, the waist to waist, and the denominator, in this case, hip and the hip measurements. So we solve this by cross multiplying. So W times 100 equals 40 times 85. To isolate W, we divide by 100 on both sides. So W is then equal to 40 times 85 divided by 100. And that's equal to 34. We check by using the result of 34 in our original proportion. So 34 to 40 is equal to 85 to 100. Then our cross products are 34 times 100 is 3,400. And 40 times 85 is also equal to 3,400. So the cross products check. And so we state our answer. Marina Martinez, rather, Martinez hip measurement should be. Thirty four inches or less. Again, in the original statement, it said the uh, ratio should be point eighty five or lower. So that is why we make the statement uh, her hip measurement should be thirty four inches or less. Have you ever wondered how people can estimate how many fish there are in the lake or what the deer population is or some other animal population? Well, here's an explanation how it's done. So here is what estimating a deer population. 
So here's how it works. To determine the number of deer in a forest, a conversationist sketches 153 deer, tags them, and releases them. Later, 62 deer are caught, and it is found that 18 of them are tagged. Estimate how many deer are in the forest. So, graphically, what it really means is, um, let me just draw a picture here, I hope you can it can make sense. So here is the deer population and they catch a certain number of deer that they tag and so what happens over time when it says later, so over time the ones with tags mix with the general deer population so now you have a population that consists of deers with tags and deer without tags. So when they catch a certain number of animals later on, they have a mix of tagged to untagged. And that's really how they estimate how many deer there are in the forest. So here now let D be the number of deer in the forest. Then 153 uh, that are caught and D is the number of deer in the forest. So here we have the tagged deer and here the total number of deer, or simply the deer that don't have a tag. So in other words, we now have 18 that were tagged out of a total of 62 that were caught. So the rest is pretty straightforward, but here it's important to keep straight what is tagged and what are simply the deer that are not tagged or the total population that is. Here's a total population of our caught, here's a total population to be estimated in the forest. So now we simply do the cross multiplication, 153 times 62 equals D times 18. We divide um, by 18 on both sides and then D equals 527. So the cross products are the same and therefore we state that there are about 527 deer in the forest. So you may want to think about this one again. It's a pretty cool way of estimating, uh, you know, any kind of population, you know, fish that are tagged, bears that are tagged, deer that are tagged. So that's what conservationists do uh, to have some kind of estimate on the uh, number of species in that particular area. And this is the end of section 5.4.